Hello everyone! It's time to tell a tale. My name is Juki Davy, but you can just call me Juki. As you probably know, we are getting into the spooky season. And what a better way to get into the spooky season than reading a spooky book. And you know what I think is kind of spooky? Monsters. Friendly monsters, however, but monsters. I have no idea what kind of monster this is going to make me turn into, but let's try it out, shall we? I'm a little nervous. Are you ready? <laughs> One, two, three. Goodness, I'm terrifying. Sorry if I scared you. It's still me, Juki Davy. Only just slightly terrifying. Looks like I got monster eyes too. <laughs> All right, well, now that I'm a monster, I think it's time to get into our monster story. So, the story that I am going to read to you today is called How I Met My Monster by Amanda Knoll, illustrated by Howard McWilliam. One night, when I reached under the bed for my truck, I found this note instead. Monsters, meet here for final test. My parents were obviously trying to trick me into staying in bed. I didn't believe in monsters. So I crumbled the paper, grabbed my truck, and zipped over to my garage. I heard some creaking and rumbling, but I wasn't scared. Our house always made noises at night. But then a voice under the bed scolded. Stop that stomach rumbling. The child will hear you. Voices? Stomach rumbling? If this was a part of my parents' trick, it was pretty cool. I peered into the inky blackness. Five pairs of eyes blinked back. See? Now he knows we're here. The voice sighed. One of you has broken monster rule number one. Maintain the element of surprise. This is no trick, I thought. There are monsters under my bed. A long-necked yellow monster slid out, followed by four little monsters. Rule number two. The yellow one instructed, never block the bed. All of you, scoot over. Hey, I realized. That one must be their teacher. I sat up straight, mesmerized by the monster parade shuffling across my bedroom. That's better, the teacher monster said. Across to the bed is clear. Now, who knows rule number three? The purple monster teetered on his tiptoes and gurgled, Get the child into bed. That's correct, Genghis. And how would you do that? Well, Mr. Z, I would rear my scariest roar. All right, give it a go. Genghis took a deep breath, opened his mouth, and let out a tiny Stomach rumbling would have a better chance of getting me into bed than that funny little noise. I laughed. The child is right, said Mr. Z, shaking his head. That was not sufficiently scary, Genghis. I'm sorry, you're not the best monster for this child. There was some creaking as Genghis slunk beneath the bed. Before I could investigate where Genghis had gone, Mr. Z asked, No, he wants to try to get the child into bed. The orange monster looked at the ceiling. The red monster looked at the floor. 
Only the green one looked at me. First, he stared at my toes and started drooling. Then, he took a step toward me, and I heard that rumbling noise again. I sprang into bed so he couldn't get my feet. Mr. Z blinked. Very unconventional, Gabe. Your stomach gurgles seem to be what this child needs. What I needed was to make sure this Gabe monster didn't eat my feet. Right. You three. The child is now in bed, said Mr. Z. As every monster knows, the ultimate objective is rule number four. Who can tell me what that is? The orange monster bounced and squeaked. Keep the child in bed until it falls asleep. Correct, Morgan. And how would you accomplish that? Shadow puppets! Shadow puppets! She squeaked again. Gabe whistled through his nose. <coughs> and I snickered. But Mr. Z said, Interesting idea. Try it. Morgan hopped onto my bed table and flailed her arms near my lamp. Silly shadows blobbed onto the wall, and a cloud of fluffy fur tickled my nose. Huh? Huh? Choo! Morgan, stop at once! Mr. Z ordered. You're supposed to scare him, not to make him sneeze. I'm sorry, but you're not a match either. Morgan's arms flopped to her sides and she scuttled under my bed. There was some more creaking, and Morgan was gone. After all that sneezing, I really needed a tissue. Suddenly, a huge shadow of uncut claws loomed across my room. Awesome, I thought, and kind of scary. I froze in place. Powerful performance, Gabe, said Mr. Z. But do either of you see a problem? Oh, I know, chirped the red monster. The child is out of bed again. Correct, Abigail. And one of you must get him back in. Let's revisit rule number one. Maintain the element of surprise. All at once, poof! The monsters vanished. Then I heard more rumbling. Were they hiding in my closet, making noises to scare me? Ha! No! It was only my stomach rumbling. All this excitement was making me hungry. I tiptoed past the closet and peeked out the door. So far, so good. No monsters. Then I stepped over the squeaky stair and sneaked down to the kitchen. As I reached into the pantry, I heard some chattering behind me. I sure hoped it wasn't that toe-loving Gabe. I yanked open the fridge. Ha! It wasn't Gabe. It was just the red monster shivering on the shelf. <laughs> Found you! I laughed. Nice try, Abigail, said Mr. Z. But this isn't working. You're not the right monster for this child. But Mr. Z, she whined, it's not my fault. He's not scared of me. I'm sorry, Abigail. Let's go. Abigail clomped behind Mr. Z. When I heard the creaking, I knew she was gone. I grabbed some crackers and headed upstairs, wondering if Gabe was gone too. I munched all the way down the hall. Then went into the bathroom to brush my teeth again. 
When I opened the door a minute later, Gabe was definitely not gone. He was right there and he was huge. I charged into my room and slammed the door. When I leaped into my bed, I knew my toes were safe. Phew! I was surprised to hear breathing under my bed. Ragged breathing. And stomach rumbling. Hey, kid. Gabe growled. Good to see ya. I pulled my covers up tight. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to start the evening with an ominous puddle of drool. I peeked over the edge of my bed. Green ooze spread soundlessly from underneath. <sighs> then the bed quivered as Gabe unfurled his spiky tail. Well, this looks quite promising, Mr. Z noted. When I heard some more creaking, I knew Mr. Z was gone. I was all alone with Gabe. Gabe loomed over my bed and began sharpening his uncut claws on my bedpost. How'd you get so big? I gasped. Rule number five, my friend. He explained. People food makes monsters grow. So thanks for the crackers. Got any toes I can munch? I scrunched in my feet so Gabe couldn't get them. This was way better than playing with trucks. No toes tonight, but you can have this, I offered, tossing a stuffed monster off the bed. Gabe dove for it. His soft, comforting snorts filled the room as he snuffled the toy. I shivered. Kid. I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> no other monsters can scare me like you, I giggled. Gabe was the monster for me. His snorts and ooze were perfect. I yawned. <sighs> and shivered again. I was asleep in no time. The end. Now I know how dogs feel. This fur is so hot. How do they live with fur like this all the time? One and a two, one and a two, and a skilly dilly you do. Well, that was interesting, wasn't it? Wow! What a fun, spooky story. I'm definitely getting into the spooky Halloween season now. My favorite part of this story was probably when the green monster was eating the crumbs of, of the food and he was getting bigger and bigger. What was your favorite part of the story? It's shout out time! I would love to give a huge shout out to my friend Eli. Hi Eli! It is so great to say hello to all of my friends out there. Thank you so much for watching Eli. I hope you enjoyed this story. If you would like a shout out just like this one, then all you have to do is email me your, your name and where you're from and I would very much love to give you a shout out in my next video. If you loved reading this spooky monster book with me, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up 
And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any great stories. I will see you all next time with lots of more really fun stories and all kinds of things when it's time to tell a tale. Goodbye, everyone! Those are excellent claws, but do you have a long tail? I leaned over to see. No, my tail is stumpy. Max slurped. But I do have an unusually long tongue. Hello, everyone. It's time to tell a tale. My name is Juki, but you can just call me Juki. I just said that. My name is Juki Davy, but you can just call me Juki. That's better. I once read the book, How I Met My Monster. And we learned the story about how this little boy met the monster that creeps under his bed. This little boy really relies on this monster to help him get to bed at night. So... What will happen when this monster goes on a spontaneous fishing trip? How will this little boy ever get to sleep? Will there be a substitute monster? Let's find out together! The monster story that I am reading today is called I Need My Monster. And let's find out together how this pans out. Um, where did I put my wand? Um, Aha! Last time I turned into this pink and purple monster. Let's see if I will turn into the same kind of monster or if I'm a different monster this time. Let's find out! A one and a two and a... Well, this is quite scary. Um, but it's still me, Juki Davy. Hopefully you're not scared back at home. But it's just me. No need to worry. Although I will say, quite scary, my goodness. All the right day. Let's go on with our story. The story I am reading to you today is I Need My Monster Written by Amanda Knoll Illustrated by Howard McWilliam And with permission from Flashlight Press But wait! Before we get into our story I am so excited to announce That I am launching a Patreon! And it would just mean the whole world to me If you supported me, Dookie Davy, And... Time to tell a tale by becoming a patron. I am offering different types of memberships, but in this video, I'm just going to cover real fast the first tier of my Patreon. For just three bucks a month, you can become a ferret friend. You get exclusive access to whatever goes on behind the scenes of Time to Tell a Tale as well as access to sneak peeks and polls, where you can have executive power in the time to tell a tale decision making. It would mean the absolute world to me if you helped to support me, Juki Davy, and Time to Tell a Tale so I can do this full time, entertaining and educating you all back at home. There are other tiers and much more bigger surprises that await. So keep watching my videos and you can learn more all about my Patreon and when it will be launching. So keep your eye out. Now, on with our story. It's time to tell a tale.
Tonight, when I looked under my bed for my monster, I found this note instead. Gone fishing. Back in a week, Gabe. What, what was I going to do? I needed a monster under my bed. How was I supposed to get sleep if my monster is gone? Hmm. I tried to sleep, but it wasn't the same without Gabe. I missed his ragged breathing, his nose whistling, the scrabbling of his uncut claws. How would I ever get to sleep without Gabe's familiar scary noises and his spooky green ooze? It was no use. Gabe would be gone for a week, and I just had to have a monster. I climbed quietly out of bed, shh, so my parents wouldn't hear me. Grown-ups have some strange ideas about monsters under beds. I knocked on the floorboards, then scrambled back under my covers. I waited nervously. Would a new monster appear? What would he look like? Would his snoring be as cheerful as Gabe's? When I heard some creaking under my bed, I knew that the substitute monster had arrived. Good evening, said a low breathy voice. My name is Herbert, and I will be your monster for this evening. Uh, Herbert? What kind of name is that for a monster? You don't sound scary at all. Have you ever scared a kid before? Well, uh, no, but I have read all the best books on the topic. Do you have long teeth and scratchy claws? I asked. No, but I have an overbite. And I am a mouth breather. Listen. Herbert's panting was kind of scary, but it wasn't enough for me. Uh, listen, Herbert, I'm sorry, I just don't think this is going to work. It's nothing personal, I just need a monster with claws. Picky, picky, Herbert complained. As you wish, I'll go. There was some more creaking, then Herbert was gone. Some scratching warned me that the second monster had arrived. Good evening, he said in a high, silky voice. My name is Ralph. I understand you need a monster with claws. If you would please lean over, I will hold out an arm for inspection. I crouched on the edge of the bed hoping to see a horrible shaggy arm with sharp, ragged nails. Instead, I was surprised to see sleeky, brushed fur with smooth, shiny claws. Excuse me, I don't mean to be rude, I asked, but is that nail polish on your claws? Yes, it is, Ralph replied. I believe professional monsters should always be well-groomed. I could tell that this was not going to work either. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Ralph, but I need a monster with scary claws, like Gabe's, I thought. <sighs> I heard some more scratching and I knew Ralph was gone. A minute later, a third voice from under the bed rasped, Check out these claws, kid. I gathered my courage and peered over the edge. The claws were impressive, jagged and dark and razor sharp. So far, so good. I was a little nervous. <laughs> Could you uh, stick out your tail? I whispered. Sure, but don't get scared. I peeked through my fingers at the slimy tail slithering over the foot of my bed. 
That's when I noticed the bow. Are you a girl monster? Of course I am! She snapped. I'm Cynthia. Do you have a problem with that? Um, yeah, I do, I admitted. I definitely need a boy monster. Boy monsters are for boys, girl monsters are for girls. Everybody knows that. To each their own, I guess. Well, aren't you a picky one? <laughs> she sniffed, and then she was gone. Was I being too picky? No! I knew that my monster needed to be well-clawed and menacing. The whole point of having a monster, after all, was to keep me in bed, imagining all the scary stuff that could happen if I got out. Then I heard a shuffling noise. And some slobbering. A fourth monster was under my bed. Hey, the name's Mac. One look at his claws proved that Mac was a big, scruffy boy monster. I shivered. Maybe this one will work out. Those are excellent claws, but... Do you have a long tail? I leaned over to see. No, my tail is stumpy. Mac slurped. But I do have an unusually long tongue. Why would I be afraid of a long tongue? I asked. Oh. I don't know, he said, trying to sound terrifying. You never know when I might... Lick you. I fell back on the bed laughing. <laughs> well, if you're not going to even try to work with me... Mac whined. I held in my giggles. I really don't think you should send me away. He warned. Kids who reject five monsters in one night. I did not reject five monsters tonight. I interrupted. My regular monster went fishing. Fishing, eh? Maybe he just left because you're so picky. Fine, I'm out of here. But I wouldn't expect another monster tonight if I were you. How was I ever going to get sleep without my monster? I was surprised to hear more creaking under my bed. Loud creaking with... Scratching. I, I thought no more monsters were going to appear tonight, I said. Sorry, I'm late, kid. Phew! It was Gabe. I thought I would enjoy fishing, but I didn't. He explained. Those fish scare too easily. No challenge at all. You, however, are challenging, my friend. You're almost too old to be afraid of monsters. You keep me on my toes. Ah, toes, a delicious snack. The bed quivered as Gabe's stomach rumbled with hunger. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to start the evening with an ominous puddle of drool. I peeked over the edge of the bed. Green ooze spread silently from underneath. Then the bed trembled as Gabe unfurled his spiky tail. He was daring me to guess where he might pop up. I shivered. 
So, you had some substitute monsters tonight. Gabe said, sharpening his claws on my bedpost. Were you scared? Then Gabe started tapping. I could tell he wanted to know if I still needed him. <laughs> no other monster can scare me like you. <laughs> I giggled, diving under my covers and pulling them up tight. Through the blanket, I heard Gabe's soft, comforting snorts. Ha! Huh. I knew it. We're made for each other. He growled. When my blanket started to slip off the bed, I knew Gabe was ready to eat. Now, if you could please stick out your foot, he said. I'd like to nibble your pinky. I yanked my blanket back up and scrunched my feet in so Gabe couldn't get them. No toes tonight, but you can have this, I offered, pushing a pillow off the bed. I didn't even hear it hit the floor. Gabe was back. The ooze was perfect. Everything was back to normal. I shivered again. I'd be asleep in no time. The end. You know, between this monster and the other monster I was, which one do you like better? This one or the pink and purple one? With the little horns. That monster was a little scary. Sorry if I scared you all back at home. I didn't mean to. I was just kind of like, how it happened. I love this unique little monster story. Perfect for those at home who love monsters and creatures and Halloween, I guess. I think my favorite was the drool. I thought that was rather funny. Thank you so much for watching with me. And now it is shout out time. I would love to give a big shout out to my friend, Olivia Rose from Frisboro, Tennessee, AKA Livy Rose. Thank you so much for watching my videos, Livy Rose. I hope you enjoyed this spooky monster read aloud. And if any of you out there would like a shout out just like this one, you can email me at jukidavy at gmail.com. And I would love to give you a shout out just like this one. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see lots more read alouds and craft videos and fun educational videos for y'all. They are all so much fun, at least. I'm having lots of fun. I hope you all have lots of fun with me. If not, you can just watch me have fun. I'm having a blast. And I will see you all next time when it's time to tell a tale. Goodbye, everyone. I don't even know how to describe what this is, but um, I like the teeth, and I like the balls, they're puffy balls, they're puffy. Happy Halloween, everyone! This is Time to Tell a Tale. My name is Juki Davy, but you can just call me Juki. It's one of my favorite holidays, Halloween! And we all know that Halloween is the holiday where you can dress up and be whatever you want to be. You can be spooky, you can not be spooky, you can be... That's it. You can be a witch, 
You can be a zombie, you can be a vampire, you can be a ghost. Last Halloween, I read a story about a witch. This year, I'm going to read a story about a ghost. And since I'm reading a story about a ghost, guess what I'm going to be? If I'm going to be a ghost, I sure hope you'll be able to see me. I might be invisible. I've never been a ghost before, so I guess we'll find out. And a ghostly ghost. Hmm. Well, this wasn't really what I was expecting, but um. Ooh. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I got a rock. Oh, I can't see. Okay. So, uh, now that I'm a spooky ghost, I think it's time to... Oh gosh! I think it's time to get into our ghost story. The story that I am going to read to you today is called... Gustavo, the Shy Ghost by Flavia Z. Drago. <laughs> Gustavo was a ghost. He enjoyed doing normal things that paranormal beings do. Passing through walls, making objects fly, and glowing in the dark. But there was nothing that he loved more than playing the violin. Almost nothing. Gustavo was secretly in love with Alma, the prettiest monster in town. But he also had a problem. You see, Gustavo was so shy that some things felt incredibly difficult for him, like buying ice cream. And the worst part of it? Making friends was terrifying! Gustavo had never dared to speak to any of the other monsters. He tried getting close to them in many different ways. But even when he was right in front of them, they just couldn't see him. Gustavo longed to be a part of something. More than anything, he wanted to make a friend. I have to be brave. I have to let the others see me, he thought. So, he decided to send a letter, a very special one. Dear Monster, I would like to invite you to my violin concert, which will take place at the Day of the Dead party, next full moon at the cemetery. I would be thrilled to see you there. Gustavo the Ghost. As the days went by, Gustavo couldn't stop thinking, What if no one shows up? What if they don't like my music? What if they don't like me? Except tonight was the night, and this time he couldn't hide. But not a soul came. So, all alone, Gustavo did what he loved most. And the music made him happy. So happy that he glowed. Oh, how he glowed! Gustavo! We are so sorry we are late. We wanted to get you flowers, but we got lost instead. And then we heard your music. 
And we saw your glow! We really loved your concert! Would you like to hang out with us? From that moment on, Gustavo's life changed! And everyone discovered that even if he didn't talk much, he was the best at helping and protecting his friends. But mostly, Gustavo never stopped surprising them. And they never stopped loving him. The was so cute. I'm so glad Gustavo ended up with friends in the end. Also, in this story, I'm sure you heard me say Day of the Dead. The Mexican holiday, the Day of the Dead, or in Spanish, Dia de los Muertos, is a holiday that takes place on November 1st and 2nd, where family members and friends gather together to pay respects and remember family and friends who have died. I should read a story about it someday. All right, well, I think it's about time to return back into my human body. Let me find my wand. This thing is so big I can't see. Ugh. Where'd it go? Oh no! Oh, there it is. Boom! <coughs> what a fun little ghostly story we read together. Gustavo is such an inspiration. Even if you might be really shy, you can still make friends by just being yourself. I know I feel like that sometimes when I feel a little shy and I still want to make friends. I loved reading this ghost story with you for Halloween. I hope you all had lots of fun reading this story with me. It's shout out time! I would love to give a big shout out to my friends Maya and Tobias Jarrell from San Jose, California. I know how much both of you love Halloween, so I would like to personally say Happy Halloween to both of you. And I hope you enjoyed this story. If you would like a shout out just like this one, you can go ahead and email me your name and where you're from at jukidavy at gmail.com and I would love to give you a shout out. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a very happy Halloween and I will see you all next time when it's time to tell a tale. Goodbye everyone. You can be a go. <coughs> Stuck. Ooh, 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 ooh. Foot goes. Boo, boo, boo. Happy Halloween, everyone. This is Dookie Davy Crafts, where we are going to be doing a fun Halloween craft together. Who here likes ghosts? Well, I like ghosts. So we're going to be doing a foot painting ghost craft. Where, you guessed it, we're going to be using our feet. Footsie, footsie, footsie. So for this craft, you will need some black paper. You can use other colors too, but I think the white ghost footprint will look the best on black paper but to each their own some black paint some white paint a paper plate a paintbrush some glue and you guessed it googly eyed i have been on a googly eyed frenzy lately i mean but how can you not like googly eyes i mean look at this Quite wonderful. If you ask me, you can get all of these supplies at your local superstores, um, craft stores, 
Uh, online. Probably other places too, but... Alright, my little ghouls. Let's get started. It's time to tell a tale with Juki Daily. All right, team. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to put our paper on the floor, like so. And on our paper plate, we're going to put some white paint on our paper plate. Like this. Come on, out you go, out you go, out you go, out you go. <laughs> so slow. All right, paint. Time to meet your doom. On your paper plate to cover the entire bottom of your foot. So, uh, use your best judgment. You can always add more paint later if you need more paint. It kind of looks like sour cream. But don't eat it. Don't. Don't eat the paint. No, no paint eaters, okay? No paint eaters. And so now we are going to put it on the floor. And now we are going to use our trusty little feet hooves and we're gonna put our foot onto the paper plate, move it around in the paint, get all get it all nice and painty. The bottom of your foot, make sure you get the entire bottom of your foot all nice and painty. And then you are going to place your foot gently onto your paper. Press just a little bit. Make sure you get all of your little pinky toes in there. And then you are going to gently lift off your foot and reveal a beautiful foot ghost onto your paper. Like this. And now we're gonna go ahead and wait for that to dry. All right, I think it's dry enough, at least, for the next steps. Oh, also, it should look something like this. But we're actually gonna turn it upside down to make it look a little bit more like a ghost. Ooh. And now we have to put a face on the ghost. So go ahead and get your googly eyes and get two googly eyes. A one and a two one. A, oh, a one and a two one. A. And we're going to glue our googly eyes onto our ghost like this. ghost has little googly eyes. So now that the ghost has eyes, now we have to put the ghost mouth using our black paint and paintbrush. And you can put whatever kind of ghost mouth you like. You can put a, um, a happy face. You can do a mad face, a sad face. You can even put like eyebrows on it too. Actually, you know what? With this paint and this paintbrush, you can probably do whatever kind of ghost face you want. Woo! Create a freedom. So spooky. But for today, I think I'm just gonna do like a little happy face.
And you know what? Just for the fun of it, I'm gonna put some dimples on my ghost. Because I have dimples, see? You see them? This one's bigger. So it'll kind of look like me a little bit, like if I was a ghost. It's kind of a creepy thought. For my dimples, I think I'm gonna use the other side of my paintbrush, just so I can get a nice little, nice little dot. And now, to finish off our ghost masterpiece, we are gonna take our white paint again and either clean your paintbrush or you can get another paintbrush, whatever you wanna do. I just got another paintbrush. And we are going to spell the word boo. You know, like how ghosts say boo, 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 as one does. Does anyone out there know how to spell the word boo? Well, if you don't know, this is how we spell the word boo. B. And another O. Two O's. Double O, if you will. And just for the fun of it, let's put an exclamation mark. You know, because we're like, boo! Like scary, like boo! And believe it or not, we are all done with our spooky foot ghost. Foot? Foot ghost. Foot. Not foot, foot, foot ghost. Boo, boo, boo. Do you like it? Spooky foot ghost, spooky foot ghost. It's kind of cute. I like it. I hope you all had so much fun making this spooky foot ghost with me today. I really like it because you get to be all mushy and messy and squishy and gooey ooey with your foot in the paint. You can be a little messy. I think that's so much fun. It's definitely not a bad thing to get messy every once in a while. Just make sure you have like towels and whatnot so you don't get paint all over your house. And I would love to see your foot ghosts at home. If you did this craft with me, I would love to see it. You can send me your pictures on my other social media platforms. The links are in my description below. And you can also send it to me at my email at jukidavy at gmail.com. And thank you all so much for joining me at Jukidavy Crafts. I wish you a very happy Halloween back at home. Have lots of fun and be safe. It's very important. And, uh, but of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any great craft videos or read alouds or other great fun stuff. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, everyone. Actually, it's kind of scary. It's the googly eyes. The googly eyes make it kind of creepy. Gooey, oh, icky, squishy. Gooey, oh, icky, squishy. Gooey, oh, icky.